Check this out, guys. I've got four 370 watt full size residential bifacial solar panels. And check out how sweet this is. Look, I've got little stands right here that uh, are boosting the front up off the ground. And if we come around the back, you'll see that uh, there are fully adjustable telescoping legs on the back here that uh, allow me to very easily deploy a large solar array on the ground without digging or screwing things together or anything like that. Let me show you more info about this. All right, let me show you how to install these stands. First and foremost, it came uh, packaged uh, very nicely. I've already kind of uh, taken some stuff apart, but uh, all of the, the brackets were wrapped in their own little uh, pack together. And then you've got uh, a little baggie with a set of screws. So one baggie will cover what you need for two of these brackets. And then each piece uh, of the leg assembly uh, is individually wrapped in uh, in plastic. So very good uh, packing. This is a 370 watt bifacial panel and uh, this is what we're gonna be mounting to today. Okay, first thing to do is find the mounting holes. So you can see that uh, hole right there. Uh, there's a couple of them uh, along the, the panel here. And this is just my particular panel. Uh, mounting holes may be slightly different uh, depending on what uh, panel you're using. I'm gonna mount uh, the long legs uh, up here in this last hole uh, before the end of the panel. And then the short legs will go in that bottom hole before the bottom of the panel. So first you need this bracket right here, and then you need this short bolt, and then this nut right here that uh, kind of has this flat, bumpy side, okay? So what we're gonna do is fit. This This bracket has kind of like this Z shape or S shape on the end. So that just uh, fits over the edge of the frame of the solar panel. And then the other important thing to take note of is, can you see how there's an indentation right here on this side? That allows this bolt to uh, seat inside of it. So we're gonna take the bolt, and we're gonna put it through that hole like that, okay? And then we're going to take the nut and we're gonna just thread that on, get it started at least on the back side. Okay, now before it gets too tight, there's some play in that. So I'm gonna actually slide it all the way up to the top for that. I'm gonna to continue to hand tighten it as far as I can get it. And then the only tool that you need is a 7 16 open-ended wrench. And you just uh, snug this up. Now, word to the wise, don't tighten it too hard uh, because it's crimping down um, between the metal back here and the plastic piece right here. And uh, I did accidentally crack one because I tightened it too hard. So don't over tighten it, just uh, snug it up. So the next parts you're going to need is this little uh, finger nut with the black plastic end and then this uh, this other nut that does not have the flat uh, bottom side is equal on both sides. So here's this other plastic uh, piece and uh, notice that there's a little flat spot right up in there. So this nut just slides up there and then I don't know if you can see but it's right there in that hole. So then you just take this nut and uh, start threading it in. Don't thread it all the way in. Just thread it in enough that it stays in place and uh, holds that uh, nut in place on the inside. But uh, you need to have it not be able to accept one of these legs easily, so it needs to be able to slide. All right, next, this is going to just clamp onto that uh, plastic piece there. I need to show you something important. This is uh, the little clip that goes on the, the side of the rail that we put on right there, okay? Notice that uh, right here, there is an indentation for a nut. So we're gonna take this longer screw right here, and then this other wing nut, this bolt, goes on this side, see how it uh, recesses into that clip. So we're gonna put it in underneath here and uh, we're just gonna twist it a little bit till it uh, seats, there we go. And then we're gonna take the wing nut right here and uh, just kind of screw that down like that. All right, this is uh, the adjustable telescoping leg. So what we're going to do is unlatch this top part just a little bit and extend it out a little bit. And I'm gonna put it so that these adjustment points are facing the back here. I'm gonna actually extend this a little further, there we go. And then that just slides right up into that bracket. And then you just hold it in place and tighten this down so it holds that leg in place and you're done. So we're just gonna repeat that uh, process for uh, all four of these here and uh, we'll be back when that's finished. All right, check it out guys, it's all set. These lower legs here are optional. You can get them or not. Uh, I like it because it kind of boosts it up off the ground a little bit and it would be especially handy uh, in a snowy uh, location, which uh, I do get uh, quite a bit of snow uh, where I live. So a couple observations. It is very, very strong if I'm pushing on it, you know, like snow or wind or, or something like that on the front side here. And then it's also very stable from the back. Of course I can, you know, push it up and, uh, and lift it up and, and move it. You know, that's, that's by design. I would highly recommend though, using more than just one and uh, putting them together and maybe even guying them out uh, into the ground just a little bit. Um, because I don't know if you'll be able to see on the camera, but uh, side to side movement uh, there's quite a bit of. Now that's with me, you know, rocking it, right? I don't think it's going to blow over or anything necessarily, but uh, it does have a little bit of give uh, side to side. The other thing to be careful of is these plastic brackets right here. 
while they're made out of very strong plastic. Whenever I pick this up and move it, the legs uh, are kind of bending and giving and stuff, and that's just because you know there's huge leverage being enacted on this uh, point, you know, at all the points, you know, up here, and uh, especially these these lower leg ones. I understand uh, plastic is a lot easier to work with and a lot cheaper to manufacture, uh, but uh, I'd love to see in the future potentially metal versions of these just to add a little bit of extra robustness because I'm afraid those are going to be uh, the first thing to uh, break in the process of moving and adjusting this panel. Let me see if I can give you a better angle and uh, show you a little better what I mean. Okay, so you're fairly straight on in that angle. Can you see how much play this has? That, uh, that leg moves a lot. Now, of course, this is designed to be moved now and again and uh, adjusted here and there, but uh, I personally wouldn't uh, be using this as like a solution for you know going RVing or something like that where you're constantly setting up and taking down and setting up and taking down because uh, I think you're going to run the risk of stressing that plastic part and uh, having it wear out on you prematurely or, or break. Once it's down in the ground, you know, the ground helps anchor the end of that uh, leg so it's significantly improved. Once again, it's just the, the side to side movement and uh, we had a small casualty here. So can you see how these legs are kind of cattywampus? Uh, compared to the panel and uh, you can see that uh, the edge of the the panel actually fell off this one here and uh, so I've got to I'll lift it up and uh, move it back over and, uh, and now it's a little better. So I'm being critical of, of something that will rarely happen naturally, especially if you have multiples of them side by side where they can kind of help uh, reinforce uh, each other, right? And then like I said at the beginning you could even consider just getting you know some nylon um, string and guying you know the ends out up there, you know, into the, with a stake in the ground or something just to uh, secure it even more and to prevent that side to side motion, then you'd be golden. And this direction from this side is the way that the solar, the solar panel has the least amount of surface area. So the chances of wind affecting it side to side are much smaller than what you're going to get, you know, on the front side here and from the back. Okay, I got three more panels uh, to make up. Let's let's build this array and uh, see how it uh, works with all four panels uh, in position and uh, working. Okay, I've got uh, these four panels set up. Let me show you how fast and easy it is to uh, deploy four giant panels like this. All right, there we have it. As you saw, it uh, is uh, quite easy to uh, deploy. And now that I have uh, four panels here together, let me try rocking them side to side. There's a little give, especially where they're not touching, but uh, it's substantially less. Let's come over here, push it from this side. Substantially less than when there's just one. Let me uh, see if I can get you a better angle on this. As I wiggle this side to side now, the movement that they have, it's substantially less. And I haven't gotten them set up uh, perfectly at the moment in terms of just, you know, putting them super tight uh, close together. When you have more panels uh, together, there's definitely significantly less side-to-side -side movement. Now, since I got these stands, Ben over at Powered Portable Solar uh, is providing uh, an additional uh, aspect uh, for these, and that is some guy lines and ground stakes. So if you uh, want to really secure these uh, better to minimize that side-to-side -side movement, uh, you'll be able to utilize those. The other thing to bear in mind is these are first-generation solar power stands, so it wouldn't surprise me if, uh, you know, Generation 2 improves upon these in the future with uh, some nice uh, added improvements to help uh, mitigate a few of these issues. These really bring uh, some good options to the table, allowing you to use these full-size residential panels in a somewhat portable or temporary installation. Perfect for people like me that live in a suburban setting that want to deploy a large amount of solar, but I don't want to attach a whole bunch of solar to my roof that I can't take with me when I move. It gets into insurance issues and stuff like that, but I also don't necessarily want to install, you know, footings and all kinds of stuff like that for a ground mount. This is the perfect solution. When I move, I can just pack them up and take the array with me, and that way my investment isn't lost, you know, on one property. And I love how adjustable it is for uh, the proper angle. The two biggest uh, issues uh, I see is uh, the side-to-side -side movement that uh, these have, uh, because they're only relying on, you know, one attachment point on a huge lever, uh, you get a lot of side-to-side -side movement. Some guy lines and stakes uh, will help uh, solve that. And then I'm not 100% sold on the plastic, even though it seems very high quality, very nice. I uh, accidentally cracked one of them myself. That was my bad. I tightened a, a bolt too hard, but I've been very careful to not stress it. And it's very difficult sometimes to not stress it when you're setting these up and uh, taking them down. Uh, but maybe uh, some kind of fabrication of, of that same part in aluminum or something like that uh, could be nice. Those are my uh, initial observations and my initial testing on uh, these stands. I'm going to be 
uh, deploying this uh, array in a semi-permanent uh, fashion here in my yard. It's going to be out in the weather for multiple years here, and it's going to be going through official long-term testing. So be sure and subscribe so you don't miss it. Links uh, for these are down in the description. Be sure and take a look at them. I sure appreciate all you guys. Please like and subscribe, comment and share. 100% free for you to do, but benefit the channel tremendously. And we'll catch you all next time.